Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my latest Kerbal Space Program Science Mode playthrough, The Stranded. As you can see, I'm starting off in the R&D facility, just unlocking some parts using the science points that we earned last episode. Haven't really got a lot to say on the subject really, I'm just getting some more bigger rocket parts so that we can build more bigger rockets and more epica rockets, etc, etc. And then we can just return to the main screen and just, uh, I don't know, twiddle our thumbs I guess, because there's not a lot going on. What's that? I'm I'm getting a signal coming through in the tracking station. Let's let's check it out. <gasps> Guys, I'm getting an SOS signal coming from the Mun. Strangely. Let's go ahead and check it out. We've got a drone inexplicably here zooming down and <gasps> Oh my goodness. There appears to be a stranded Kerbal on the surface of the Mun. How did he get here? Who is he? Lots of questions and more all to be answered in this episode of the Stranded. Oh look, he's even planted a flag and everything. <laughs> Intros and salutations aside though, if you're new to this series and are a bit confused as to what's happening right now, this is my series, The Stranded, in which I unlock the entire science mode tech tree, but along the way, rescuing a Kerbal from every single planet and moon in the Kerbin system that has somehow inexplicably got themselves stranded there. So far, we've only had one episode and we rescued Marcus House from the surface of Minmus. He was trying to compete with RGV aerial photography. The fool, no one could compete with that. And he tried to compete with them by going to another celestial body, which in my opinion is far too far away. Anyway, it seems that someone else has stra got themselves stranded on a different celestial body. This time, it's the Mun. And it's useful that these strandings seem to be happening, you know, in line with the level of technology we have. It would be a real shame if this Kerbal was stranded on Eve, eh? <laughs> anyway, here you can see I have constructed a, uh, a fairly basic uh, MUN rocket, nothing to write home about really. It's got some science kits, we can grab some science points whilst we're there and further our journey along the tech tree. It's a little bit overkill for a first MUN landing rocket, chiefly because obviously I have to have space for two Kerbals on board. For most people, your first MUN rocket does not need two seats, and that's why I'm kind of glossing over a lot of the details in this video really, like I didn't really talk a lot about the build process of this rocket and the lander itself because this is like uh it's kind of a fun series i think i think it's there's a there's a sense of enjoyment to be had out of watching someone unlock the tech tree there's a a little bit more kind of weight and purpose to visiting planets and moons and performing science there so that adds a little bit of you know enjoyment and it also I don't know, it's kind of fun once in a while to sort of handicap yourself and use parts that you might not necessarily normally use because you have better parts available to you. So that's kind of why I wanted to do a science mode playthrough, but I wanted to add a bit of a twist to it because this is the third time I've beaten Kerbal Space Program science mode. And the first two times I did it, I know I was actually getting to a point with all of this, this tangenting, <laughs> the first two times I did it, that was in a very much a tutorial format. So if you want an actual tutorial for your first MUN landing, I guess probably the fastest way is to just go on you know, YouTube search and type in Mad Clown Mun Tutorial. Uh, I've done a bunch of tutorials on Mun missions, various Mun missions, like your first Mun mission, your first Apollo-style Mun mission in that you do a you know, lunar orbital rendezvous, etc, etc. So I thought, you know, tutorials are done. They are so 2019. I don't need to do them anymore. Uh, so I thought I'd just do a fun, a fun little playthrough of KSP Science Mode. And there is our rocket all, uh, you know, in its barest form, ready to go to the Mun. Yep, this is going to be a direct ascent mission. Uh, there's not going to be any orbital rendezvous and stuff like that, because while it is pretty cool to do lunar orbital rendezvous, or sorry, I should say lunar orbital rendezvous, uh, it actually doesn't really make a lot of sense in Kerbal Space Program unless you're launching, like, a massive lander or something like that. Usually, direct ascent is just easier, and in my mileage, it's, like, no less efficient to do a direct ascent Mun mission, which, of course, is uh, not the case in the real world, hence why the real Apollo missions were Apollo style, if you will. You know, they used Lunar Orbital Rendezvous, didn't they? Uh, the Saturn C8 was the proposed direct ascent version of the Apollo missions, and that rocket was so big, the reason that NASA didn't go with that design was because they literally did not have a factory that was big enough to construct the first stage. That's a true story, by the way. You can check out my Saturn C8 video uh, on YouTube. I don't really want to promote that video too much though because that was the only video that I couldn't save 
from that time that Sony and Werner Chappell copyright claimed my entire channel's back catalogue, which meant that I had to change the soundtrack in the video. It was a nightmare. But for reasons I don't really can't really get into, that video I couldn't uh, edit and get rid of the music that was causing the conflict. So that video, I keep thinking about, I keep meaning to redo it, basically. The Saturn C8 video. Do you guys want to see a Saturn C8? I mean, it's going to go in my space. Uh, I, I keep meaning to revisit Space Race Speedrun, but the views for that series kind of took a bit of a dive, and uh, I don't know. I've, I've kind of done the... I, I kind of just wanted to do an Apollo Speedrun, really, but I thought I'd do the uh, the Gemini and Mercury Redstone missions as well. But now I'm on the uh, Soviet side, which is basically all the R7. <laughs> it's just like... You, the Vostok video is going to be the same as the uh, the Soyuz video, pretty much. I'd like to start doing kind of diverging on that series a bit and doing the uh, the missions that never were. So you know your uh, your N1 moon landing, your Saturn C8, etc. I've done videos on the uh, N1 and the Saturn C8 before, but I'd like to redo the Saturn C8 potentially because of the reasons I've just gone through, and the N1 because uh, I think I can probably mix it up a little bit in Space Race Speedrun. I try and remix the missions a bit, so explore possible alternate uses for the craft. And the M1, you know, its ambitions were not limited to just the moon. There were plans to uh, take it even further, which uh, I'll, I'll save all that for that video. And also there was the planned Soyuz moon landing as well that would have used the actual Soyuz launcher to uh, get to the moon. And there was a Gemini moon landing proposition that would have used the, you know, the Gemini vehicle. So really, a lot of potential for uh, alternate history moon landings. But here we are. Performing my moon landing. We've arrived at the site. We can take down his little SOS flag and we can plant our own flag in its place. Because we're here, we've rescued, well, we're, we're going to rescue this poor stranded Kerbal here. But let's just find out, you know, who is this Kerbal? Let's just knock and have a little... Uh, wait a second. Tim Dodd? Is that you? Uh, yeah, it is. Matt, is, is that you? It, it is. Is... <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It is I. But what are you doing on the mun? Well, okay. Remember, do you remember Dear Moon? How, you know, Yusaku Maezao is flying a bunch of people around the moon? Yes, I do recall that. Yeah. Uh, so I thought it was... Because you signed up for that, didn't well, you? Well, I, I thought I did, but apparently I accidentally signed up for Dear oh. Mun. And I guess I didn't read the contract at all, and it had nothing to do with Dear Moon. It was literally just someone sending me on a one-way trip to the moon. So, whoops, my bad. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I probably should have read the fine print. But then again, most Kerbal uh, missions to the moon are, in fact, one way. So, uh, maybe that's on you, really. Yeah, it probably is. I mean, <laughs> yeah, at this point, I, I guess I don't know what I'm doing. I don't really have much hope in this <laughs> tiny little tin can. So, uh, I'm glad to see you, though. Well, look, you know, I've got a spare seat in my lander right over there. How about I give you a lift back to Kerbin? Uh, I'm not gonna lie. That, <laughs> that honestly doesn't look nearly as cool as the starship I assumed was gonna be doing this, but... Oh, I'm uh, sorry. I... We should just go back in your rocket then, shall we? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's point. right! Fair, You're stuck fair here, point. aren't you? <laughs> fair point. Okay, whatever. Yeah, sure. I guess I'll, I'll take a ride. It, it I mean, this isn't... This isn't even the first time I've needed to rescue you from the Mun, if I recall correctly. I seem to recall you stranding a Saturn V here a few years ago, listen, leaving listen, three listen. of your Kerbals. I don't know if I'd call that stranded. The instructions, again, were unclear. Uh, you you told me, or someone told me, I don't remember who at that time, was, uh, you know, send a, a launch Saturn V to the moon. So I did exactly that. Did I not? I feel, I feel like it's more, this is more of a problem of you needing to read the, the small print and contracts a bit more closely, you know? Especially when it Maybe. comes to the intricacies of space flight. <laughs> Maybe I should uh, get a lawyer or something to read for me because we all know I'm pretty horrible at reading. So yeah, this is a, I guess, double the sign now. I'm, I'm 0 for 2. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, hop in the lander then and I'll, I'll get you back home. <sighs> thank you, thank you so much. You're, you're welcome. Okay, so now that Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut, is uh, safely inside the, uh, the the return vehicle, I may as well get Bob Kerman inside as well. I kind of glossed over the fact I did all my science when I first got here because you guys know how science mode playthroughs work, right? I've got all my science here. 
not much more to do other than just head back home. Now, I did mention this in the last episode of The Stranded, where in which I rescued Marcus House, as previously mentioned. Um, I'm not going for, like, the maximum amount of science I possibly can with these missions, just so that, you know, the series is a bit more staying power. I You can unlock the entire tech tree just by going to the Mun and Minmus and just farming out science by visiting loads of different biomes. I'm setting the arbitrary rule for this series that I can only collect science uh, from one biome on each planet and moon. And obviously then, that, that, that includes stuff like flying over certain biomes. I can't just sit in orbit gathering science from above various different biomes like, you know, the Midland craters, the lowlands, etc. So I can get science from space high above a celestial object, a space, you know, near to a celestial object, and from one specific biome um, f from that place again. The exception, of course, being Kerbin, because in the early game, you kind of need to be able to take science from more than one biome. And there is Kerbin there, beautiful little Kerbin rise as we prepare to perform our exit burn from the Mun and get myself, well I should say Bob Kerman and Tim Dodd Kerman, the everyday Kerbal Dot, back down, back to uh, back to Earth. And I, I thought I did a nice little touch there, right? Because he's got the uh, the SpaceX style suit, but it's got the orange trim, like his cosmonaut suit that he has. So yeah, I feel like he should be a bit more grateful than he necessarily came across. But I'm sure he'll leave us a glowing review once we get back to back to Kerbin, really, which is rapidly happening now. We got all of our science, I transferred, made sure it was all transferred into the capsule, none of it was still inside the experiment bays because, well, obviously those science bays have now gone. But we're pretty much, we're back home now. So, Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut, thank you so much for flying Lowen Aerospace today and I hope you enjoyed the flight. Yeah, I'd say it's about as good as Spirit Airlines or, you know, EasyJet or something. It, it was, it was fine. I mean, I, I did rescue you from, like, another celestial body. I, Matt, you know. I said it was fine. Okay? I don't think it's really compare, f fair to compare my amazing I'm... rocketry company to a terrestrial listen, aircraft. Listen, I'm just saying, if you're going to be building this stuff, you might as well, like, I, you might as well have given me a seat, you know, or, like, some I gave uh, you an food. iPod Touch with a copy of Over the Hedge on it. Ah. Uh. In-flight entertainment. Let me tell you, three days back from the Mun, and all I get is an iPod Touch with a copy of Over the Hedge on it. I'm not going to lie. After the 17th time of watching it, I was kind of over it. But I guess it was fine. It was fine. Well, you know, you're welcome. You're welcome. Well, um... Hey, well, I'll, next time, next time... Next time you just, get stranded on the Mun again, yeah, I'll, um... That's not going to happen again. <laughs> There's some famous last words if I ever did hear them. <laughs> All right then, Tim. Well, um, you can leave a review down below if you want. Otherwise, uh, do you have anything you want to say to the audience? Uh, read the fine print. There's there's some there's some words to live by. Also, everyone, <laughs> read the names scrolling on screen. It's my patrons and channel members who help Yay! support this. All right, uh, Tim, you're done now. Okay, this is my bit now. <laughs> trying no, to steal I, I my to trying to steal and, my and thumb. All right, well, you listen. do the outro. Go on. Okay. A uh, huge thank you to Matt's Patreon and YouTube members. Because... We've got like five seconds left, by the way. Oh, crap. Uh, because they're the people that help make what he does possible. Because if you weren't supporting him financially, and click the what's things he going to do? And click the things on screen as well. Click 